because of the shortage of GLP-1 medications, there has been a lot of talk in the GLP-1 community about compounded medications. There is a lot of intimidation and lack of knowledge floating in the air. There has been a lot of Googling going on. One of the main topics of discussions have been 503A and 503B pharmacies. So as a medical provider and a nurse of 22 years with a background in cardiovascular medicine, medical surgical medicine, and now working under the umbrella of emergency medicine, I would hope to provide you some explanation, a little bit of clarification to put some of y'all's mind at ease. But first, I definitely want to validate the common fear of compounded medications when it comes to an untrained eye and especially an inexperienced consumer of compounded medications. It's definitely a fair feeling of skepticism when it comes to this medication, especially after seeing and hearing and viewing videos that are heavily weighted in fear-mongering. And truth be told, that fear is rooted in the fact that compounded medications are not approved by the FDA. There are a list of medications that I can talk to you about that are not approved by the FDA, but some of us take them every single day and we don't even blink. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this to you guys in the simplest of terms. I'm not gonna send you guys to Google where you'll be going down in these Google rabbit holes. Okay, so there is no compounded medication that is FDA approved, 503A or 503B. They are not FDA approved. No compounded medication is FDA approved. Now, 503A and 503B pharmacies are designated by the FDA, okay, and regulated by the FDA by way of the pharmacy board. A 503A medication can only be made if it is patient specific per a physician prescription, and it can only be made in limited quantities. That means if it is a 503A pharmacy, your medication was made for you per your doctor's prescription, and it can only be made in a limited amount of quantity. You got it? Whereas 503B pharmacies can make those same medications in mass amounts and they can be made and sold with or without a prescription. Okay. Now the reason compounded medication even went into mass production is so that these medications can be sold to practitioners, to clinics, to healthcare centers, to these big pharmacies. Okay, so that they can get a lot of this medication and so that it can be billed differently. Y'all, this all boils down to billing when it comes to 503A and 503B compounded pharmacies. So 503B pharmacies, they can outsource. They can outsource their medications and sell it, resell and resell it to whomever. Okay, and one of the things that I feel like a lot of people play on when it comes to 503B pharmacies, pharmacies is that 503B pharmacies have stricter regulations. They do. They have stricter res regulations because in the as a result of this mass production of medication, it also resulted in more harm done to the community because these medications were made in large batches and they were not patient specific. So because they were not patient specific and it was causing harm and sometimes unaliving of patients, the FDA went into the pharmacy board to put down harder regulations. That's the only reason why they have more and more firm stipulations and regulations and more checks and everything has to be reported and this and that because too many incidents and adverse reactions were happening. So because of this, Congress created a new category for these large scaled facilities called compounding outsourcing facilities, 503B facilities. Now, would I purchase from a 503B facility? Of course I would. Walgreens is a 503B facility. Walmart is a 503B facility. Um, most of the bigger brands of pharmacies are 503B facilities because they have to buy things in bulk because they have more patient load. With 503A pharmacies, they didn't necessarily need to have any stricter laws enforced on them because the medications are patient specific, individual specific. So there were not any critical adverse events that happened that would have 
made Congress establish new and stricter laws for 503A pharmacies, which is why I would personally prefer a 503A pharmacy, but I definitely will purchase from a 503B pharmacy. We all have. We all have. So honestly and personally, I think that for some reason, we all are focusing on the wrong thing. 503A, 503B, they're both designated and governed by the FDA, but these are not FDA approved medications. These medications are regulated by the pharmacy boards by way of the FDA. Does that make sense to y'all? The FDA is forcing the pharmacy board to have regulations to make these medications safe for us, but they are not FDA approved. And guys, these regulations have to do with the integrity of the medication, the sterility, repackaging, labeling, distributing, you guys, as well as billing. If y'all only knew, a lot of this has to do with billing because the FDA is watching the pharmacy board who is watching the pharmacist. Y'all are covered. You guys are covered. So do we need to call the pharmacy and ask them where they got the medication from? Maybe, maybe, but if you are with a 503A or a 503B pharmacy, I would say that you are in good hands. None of us are gonna know how these medications affect us until we actually take them. Just because one person had an adverse reaction, it doesn't necessarily mean you will have it. We all have different genetic makeups. So just try to keep your ear to someone who you trust. Y'all vet your sources of information. It's okay to read reviews, but let me tell you, you are not gonna find out one pharmacy that has 100% great reviews. Every pharmacy has had a recall. Every pharmacy has had a patient complaint. Like, I don't know you guys, but I can validate that your feelings are valid when it comes to imposters, okay? Just keep your ears to the street when it comes to dealing with pharmacies who have had several um, FDA run-ins, pharmacy board run-ins, um, pharmacist run-ins, you know, things of that nature. But at the end of the day, I've been a nurse for 22 years and I have always given compounded medications. I never knew that there was a this scare with compounded medications until the GLP-1 community. I never knew this. So this is all new to me. I'm shocked that people are in an uproar with compounded medications, um, but I do understand the fear. So I hope this video established some um, clarity and will give you guys a little bit more peace of mind when it comes to compounded medications because at the end of the day we are in a true shortage and there is a desperate need for these GLP-1 compounded pharmacies and I hope that you guys are successful in finding one that will treat you and your families. Take care.